Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to our talk. I know it's very late in the afternoon, but hopefully we can keep you awake. Um, <laughs> so as Shaina already introduced, like I'm Neha and she's Radhika, and today we're going to talk about how we drive a business using machine learning. Uh, so before we go into more details, a, a little bit about me. So I'm a data science manager at in Strategic Finance. And before joining Uber, I was with uh, Adobe. And these are the organizations I'm associated with. Uh, hi, I'm Radhika. I'm a data scientist in the Strategic Finance team at Uber for about two years now. Prior to this, I graduated from Duke University with a master's in statistics. Uh, great. Um, so basically, if you look at traditional business and business strategy, most of it has been run using uh, Excel sheets by associates and very little statistics and data science has gone into strategy. But lately, many companies, including Uber, have been running uh, strategy using machine learning and AI and a lot of science and statistics. And that is the mission of our team. So if you put in uh, words or in English, so the mission of our team, the data science team as part of finance has been to supercharge decision making using intelligent, automated and objective financial insights. So all the decisions that we take or all the projects that we take as a team are based on this mission. Uh, so today our talk will focus mainly on financial metrics forecasting. Uh, so at Uber, uh, for any business to run, we need to plan or we need to see how the business is growing and for this forecast become really important. For Uber as a company, one of the key metrics or primary metrics that we have is trips. So what our team does is our team does long term forecasting of trips. Uh, along with trips, we also uh, need to forecast our riders and drivers because they are our two like main like in a peer to peer shared economy. There are two counterparts. So predicting how many active riders and drivers we are going to have in a particular month in each city, uh, predicting what is the retention rate, which is basically the probability of a rider or driver staying on our platform month to month, predicting the trips per active rider and driver, which is basically how, how many trips or because that's a primary li liquid market, like liquid uh, metric that we can measure, are they going to take? So all these are the different metrics that we forecast for long-term as part of our team. These uh, metrics have several applications. So one of the primary applications, which is the bread and butter of our team has been financial metrics forecasting, sorry, financial planning and strategy. So uh, again, to plan and to run a business efficiently, we need to plan the future and to plan, we need the forecast. We need to see where the growth is as Uber is a global business. We are present in all seven continents and we have over 600 cities, we, but it is also very local and each city is different. So we need to plan how much to invest in which city. So that is done using our forecast. A second application of our forecast is community operations. So we have our driver partner and our rider partners. And as the user platform, as they onboard on our platform, they have several questions. And what we call community operations is basically our call centers. So we have several uh, millions of calls coming into our call center and we need to staff agents on call center. And the number of agents that are staffed depends on the trips that we have and the defect rate or the possibility of having a question. So all these things are also forecasted and planned using our forecast. Uh, the third thing uh, that we use a financial forecast is for Uber Eats. So as uh, Uber is going into, uh, we are not only providing you trips, but we are also uh, working towards getting your favorite food on at your doorstep. So. Uh, and Uber Eats is growing uh, tremendously. So we also use our financial forecasting for predicting how many trips uh, we will have on Eats or how many deliveries, and also what is the average size of the delivery in terms of dollars or local currency, whatever it may be. Uh, so all these uh, are non-trivial problems. Uh, so there are a few challenges uh, which we face, which are common across all these applications. Uh, first challenge is uh, uniqueness of each city. So each city in the world is different. Like Sao Paulo is very different from San Francisco, from New Delhi or Dubai. So all these different cities have different population, different income, 
incomes difference uh, modes of public transportation. So the growth of trips or the growth of Uber is very different across different cities. So building a model that can, building a single model or a platform that can cater to all these different cities is challenging. Uh, the second challenge uh, that we face is the time series is non-stationary, meaning the shape will change from city to city. The mean of the curve changes from city to city and from time to time. So basically, cities can be in different phases. The initial phase could be, say, exponential growth. Maybe at later point of time, it can become linear or saturated. So all the different cities, as the market matures, have different shape of the curve or a different gradient. Uh, the third is uh, our trips are affected by the events that are happening in the city. So there could be a snowstorm that could impact the number of trips. All the different holidays, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, uh, Halloween, New Year's, Christmas, they all impact holidays. And uh, that's what we have to take into account when planning our trips. Lastly, uh, we have this problem of cold start, which is basically if there is a newly launched city and we launch cities in all different parts of the world, like every month, if, <clears throat> uh, with newly launched cities, you have very little data to predict how the city will grow. So basically we have to use some similarity matching or do some kind of, uh, uh, some similarity basically to understand how the city will grow and get some data from neighboring cities and stuff. So these are all the different challenges that we face and Radhika now will tell us how we actually solve these. Thanks Neha for the introduction. So as Neha discussed the various challenges that we face, I'll now talk about the models that we've implemented to address some of these challenges. So we've implemented two primary models within the team. There's a cohort model and there's a black box model, and I'll go into details of each one by one. So starting with the cohort model, we first cohort all of our users, our riders and the drivers on our platform based on their month of joining our platform, because we've seen that over time, their behavior significantly differs based on when they join. We also represent trips using a functional form as shown here. We divide trips into three essential metrics. There's first time riders or drivers, there's retention rate and the trips per active. And I'll go into definitions of each. So by first time riders and drivers, we mean all of the new users who join our platform and take their first trip in that month. The retention rate implies the percentage of users that we retain in the future months or the percentage of users that are still active going forward. Trips per active is the average number of trips taken by any of our users who are active in a particular month. So going into some more detail, we separately forecast the trips from the rider side and the driver side in this model. So uh, on the rider side, we forecast first time riders, retention rate, trips per active separately, and then use this equation to arrive at a trips number from the rider side. We do the same on the driver side as well, and then we use a regression-based weighting mechanism to arrive at a total trips number for the city. So here are some plots on how the curves look like. The first time drivers and riders is, an, is either a linearly or an exponentially increasing curve and might saturate towards the end. It is sort of an S-shaped curve, as Neha explained, based on which city we are talking about and what time we are in. The retention rate is shown by the different cohorts here, and it's gra it gradually decreases over time. And the trips per active users is increasing over time, though not very significantly. Then using all of these three, using the equation described above, uh, we reach at a forecast for the trips number. Now moving on to the black box model, which is significantly different from the cohort model. Here we do not cohort our riders or drivers and neither do we divide trips into a functional form. We instead use trips as a singular time series and forecast using this model. So it is a black, we call it a black box model because it is an ensemble of various time series and Bayesian, classical and Bayesian time series models. So the weights for the ensemble for every single model are calculated using their performance in the different backtest periods. The model set includes exponential smoothing, there's ARIMA model, there's ARIMA model with the exogenous variables and also including seasonality. Then there's a TBATS model and there are Bayesian structural time series models. We also do an interesting thing called model averaging wherein we train our ensemble models at different time periods and 
do a weighted average of the forecast to get rid of potential misleading volatility in some of the recent data points. So now let's look at the infrastructure behind this model, which is really interesting, by the way. So this model is an ensemble of ensembles, as we saw. It is an ensemble over the different models, as well as different time periods. So the system has two main phases. There's, an, there's the training phase that happens offline, which takes the bulk of the time. It takes about four to five minutes to train the ensemble for every single city. But we do this in parallel, so it takes about six to seven minutes to train the models for about 600 cities in parallel. And the trained model objects are then stored in one of our databases, such as HDFS, which is easily accessible at the time of prediction. So the prediction is what happens online, and that is the part that is exposed to our stakeholders. So who just have to press a button and the prediction is in, has the SLA in the order of seconds because the trained model object is essentially just read, read from the database and a prediction is produced. So yeah, as we discussed, uh, it's super interesting how our team sits at the intersection of machine learning, finance, product, and engineering. And there's a lot of interesting upcoming work. There's half yearly rebase of our ride sharing and Uber Eats, as Neha described. And then there's a new, a, a new system that we're launching called cross-level optimization engine. And this is a rolling on-demand budgeting engine. And we're also adding a lot more spend signals to affect our forecast going forward such as incentives, marketing spend, referral spend, and onboarding costs. 